Hi and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things. My name is Maximilian and today I'm going to show you how I created our latest profile picture. Now for those of you who are not following me on social media yet, I'm going to blend it in on screen right now and this is the image that I'm talking about. However, since I already did a full episode on how to photograph your own eye last week, which you can by the way find up here or in the description below, in this week's episode I'm going to stick to how to take the self-portrait and how to merge those two images into the composite that you've just seen in Adobe Photoshop. Stay with me! But before we get started, let's go over the list of things that we'll need for today's project, beginning with a camera and obviously a camera lens. For this shoot I decided to shoot with my 60D together with this 18 to 135mm lens simply because the 6D Mark II is filming and my other full frame cameras don't really have any wide angle lenses available to them and to me it was important to shoot with a wide angle lens just to create that forced perspective where things that are closer to the lens appear larger in the frame in relation to things that are further away. In other words, the camera lens that I'll be holding in front of my face somewhat like this is going to appear larger in relation to my head which will be further away from the lens and that's going to increase the effect of that image much more and make it more dramatic once we edited my iris into that front element of this camera. Now, besides the camera, we'll obviously need some light because we're photographing indoors. I chose some artificial light, we just won't have enough ambient light available. And that's why I've got a speed light handy, which we'll be using off camera with a shoot through diffuser. And that's going to make sure that we have soft and even lighting across my whole head and the camera. And in addition, it's going to produce some nice catch lights in my eye, at least in the one that will be visible behind the camera. And that's just going to help to make the whole image appear more lifelike and more vivid. And that's pretty much it for the equipment. If you want to, you can use an intervalometer or a remote control to make your life a little bit easier. But if you don't have any of these handy, you can simply use the self-timer function to create self-portraits with a camera in front of you. Now let's start setting things up. So that was the easy part, now let's take the image into Adobe Photoshop and get creative with it. So let's open up our camera raw file. I'm just gonna make some quick adjustments and some local corrections before loading it into Adobe Photoshop. Once we got our image loaded into Photoshop, we need to extract our subject or in my case my self-portrait in order to further process it and create our composite. In order to do so, we're going to use the select subject function in Adobe Photoshop and this usually does quite a good job. Now typically it needs some manual adjustments and once we've got those adjustments made, we can refine the selection by once again going into the selection tab and selecting select and mask with the shift key pressed on our keyboard. In the following dialog box we can choose to export our refined selection as a layer mask and that's what we're going to do. Easy as that, we've got our subject extracted from the background. A few more local adjustments and slight corrections later, it's time to import our iris from last week's video into this project. Next I'm going to overlay the camera lens with that iris and adjust its size with the local transform tool. By holding down the control key on my keyboard and clicking on the layer symbol of that iris in the layer panel, I can create a new selection that is congruent with that iris which allows me to paint in some shadows around the edges of the iris, especially in the upper right corner as that's where the light is coming from and that's where the most shade will be cast by the edge of my camera lens. To make that shape look more natural, I set the layer blend mode to multiply and the opacity of that layer to roughly 40%. In addition, I'm going to add the layer effect in a shadow to my iris. 
After that's done, I'm going to shrink down the size of the iris to the precise size of the front element to make the composite appear more realistic. In the next step, I'm going to clean up the camera lens a little bit more and get rid of some flares that interfere with the projection of my iris. To do so, I'm going to duplicate a section of the front element that is clean of glare and reflections and then I'm going to rotate it to make it match the section of the lens that I want to patch with it. A few adjustments later, the flare is gone and the composite looks a lot better. But without any glare or reflections on the lens, the image loses some of its original dimension and some of its lifelike appearance, so let's add it back in some glare to the lens and make it look more lifelike and tie the two components together even more. Unfortunately, I don't have any suitable flares in my library, so let's download some stock images. And this one looks pretty good, I think that's going to work well, especially because of its black background which makes it easy to edit it into our composite. I'm just gonna overlay the whole frame and choose the layer blend mode screen which basically eliminates all the black parts of that new layer. Now all that I have to do is to remove those parts that are not overlaying the iris with a quick layer mask and voila, the image is almost ready. But before we continue, I'm going to convert my self-portrait into a smart object, which not only makes our project a lot more clear, but smart objects also allow for non-destructive adjustments, which can be really handy in the further process. To convert one or more layers into a smart object, simply select those layers in the layer panel and then right click and select convert to smart object. All that's left for us to do now is to add a complementary background. But before I do so, I'm just gonna make my canvas a little bit larger so that I have free range when choosing its final dimensions later. Because it's always easier to crop in than to extend a canvas and a background that already exists. And for my background I'd like to have a bit of structure but nothing too distracting and that's why I think this image is a good fit. By the way, I found this image on Pexels which is a great website for downloading royalty free stock image. A big thanks goes out to Milo Textures on Pexels for supplying this image. Thank you. To apply this texture to a color of our own choice, we can now create a solid color layer right underneath it. For my project, I chose a bluish shade of aqua simply because it matches my outfit and it complements the color of my iris, which is the main subject of this image and which I really want to stand out. And then I go back to the texture layer and set the layer opacity to about 50% and its blend mode to luminosity. Adding another solid black layer with a layer mask right over top of it is a quick and easy way to create shadows around the edges of the frame and to direct the viewer's eye right towards the center. These shadows will also work well with the lighting of my self-portrait. For the same reason I added another layer and painted in just a slight bit of white right in behind my head. This helps adding in some extra light and supports the lighting on my own body. The layer blend mode I chose for this layer is called soft light. After that we're going to paint in a few more additional shadows around the edges of the portrait to make it look more coherent with the background. To do so we're going to create a new layer and hold down the control key by clicking on the portrait layer to create a selection that is congruent with the portrait and that allows us to paint in shadows that are not spilling over the edges of the portrait. By using a soft brush with a low opacity we can make sure that the shadows are going to blend right in and won't stand out too bad. The layer blend mode I chose here is again soft light. Last but not least I'm going to make a few more minor adjustments in camera raw to tie everything together nicely. And that's how I created this composite. How do you like the result? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed today's video please consider subscribing and leave me a thumbs up. Both are free and easy ways to support my work and this channel and they really mean a lot to me. Thanks already, I see you next week with another video. Until then stay creative, keep shooting and have a good time. Cheers!